Welcome to another edition of Healthcare is Missing Link, a podcast where we help you uncover those things that are stealing from your best health and most optimum wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Mark Sherwood. In this episode, we're going to take a little diversion from our normal thing, as you know, and we're going to give you a little bit of just good news. Why is just good news important for your health? We are inundated with potential negative news, whether it be from current climates we're in or not, there is negative or bad news everywhere. Bad news can become contagious, as can good news. So we search high and low for things that will give you a little bit of good news in the middle of your day, because good news is good for your health. So we're going to start this one now, the two stories that I think you'll find very, very fascinating when you're talking about good news. The first one is about a guy named Simon Fitzmorris. How many have heard of Simon Fitzmorris? Probably not many, but Simon Fitzmorris, just so you'll know, is an award-winning writer and film director. And his films, by the way, have screened at film festivals all over the world and won prizes at home and abroad. Now, after his second short film, The Sound of People, which, by the way, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2008, that's a huge film festival, director... Simon Fitzmaurice was diagnosed with a very terrible condition. It was a motor neuron disease known as ALS. Some of you might know it as Lou Gehrig's disease. It's the debilitating disease for which the uh, viral ice bucket challenge was raised, uh, was was used to raise awareness back in September of 2014. Now, ALS or this motor neuron disease gradually left him completely paralyzed. Once he was completely paralyzed, Fitzmaurice typed, get this, he typed the script for the next feature film he was about to do called My Name is Emily through the movement of his eyes and iris recognition software called Eye Gaze. Now, this is how he communicated to direct the entire film, believe this, across its five-week shoot in August and September of 2014. Now, The film, My Name is Emily, was released in 2015, and it was nominated for eight Irish Film and Television Academy Awards, and Fitzmaurice received the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2016 London Screenwriters Festival for the work. Now, Fitzmaurice, get this, he wrote a memoir called It's Not Dark Yet. I think there's a lot in that title, which I'll talk about in just a moment. It's Not Dark Yet. But it chronicles his experience living in a motorized wheelchair and communicating using an eye tracking computer and was the number one bestseller in Ireland. Now, it's not dark yet. I think that's a very applicable thing for a little teaching moment. Many times we think that in the darkest times, it's really, really dark. But darkness has sort of a graduating effect, doesn't it? Sometimes it's really, really dark, but it's not quite dark yet. Sometimes darkness might seem dark, but it's not quite all the way dark yet because get this, the curious thing about darkness, it's always defeated by a little bit of light. Just a little bit of light will defeat any amount of darkness. No matter how dark it is, there's always a light. And Fitzmaurice obviously kept his light alive of life. And maybe that's something we need to hear today. We need to keep a little bit of light alive in the middle of a darkness because remember, like the star in the middle of a darkened night, You got more darkness, but that light draws all attention there. Our next story is about a boy, a boy named Isaiah Williams, who is about to become a hero, unexpectedly so, and probably not even welcome so. He actually saves his father from a diving incident. Get this. The crucial moment came at the end of this relaxing day at Quiet Water Beach for this Pensacola family of five on a Saturday. So the Williams family had just spent all day swimming and relaxing when shortly after sunset, Asaya convinced his dad, Josh, to take one last dip before calling it a night. Now, as Audrey, who is Asaya's mother, stayed 50 feet away on the beach, occupied uh, with her two uh, other small children, Asaya uh, jumped legs first into the water, followed by Josh, who dove head first. That's significant because remember, Asaya jumped legs first, Josh jumped head first. But the water was much shallower than the family who had recently moved to Pensacola from Georgia had expected. So it's interesting because Asaya says this, and I'm quoting from him, I had a little time limit in my head. 
If I jump in and the person I'm jumping in with me, that certain amount of time doesn't come up, I go after him. Imagine a nine-year-old boy thinking like that. Asaya goes on to say in the story, all I remember was that he said he broke his neck and he said he was scared. So Asaya is recalling this several days after the incident and people obviously are all over this young man. How did you do this? And you're going to be amazed at what he was able to pull off because get this, Asaya never took any true technical swim training at all. He just knew something was wrong, terribly wrong at the moment. And he was the only person in position to help. Now, how many of you have felt terribly inequipped to help, but you were the only person was able there. You were the only person that was available at that moment. Many times at that very moment, you're able to do supernatural things, even if you weren't trained to do so. Check out what happened with Asaya. Once he saw his dad wasn't coming up, clearly he says this, when he saw he wasn't coming up, he knew something was wrong. And Josh was on his stomach floating and Asaya flipped him over because he, he just knew he couldn't breathe like that. So he flipped him over and he understood that Josh couldn't move at all. Because remember, he had a broken neck at this time. There was despite a hundred pound weight difference between the, the father and the son, Asaya somehow got enough energy. Let's call it superhuman. Let's call it supernatural strength to turn his dad over and ensure he wasn't at risk of drowning since he had very obviously, as stated, suffered a debilitating neck injury. So he kept his dad flipped over on his back and slowly tugged, dragged, pulled him to shore for what seemed like an eternity until some bystanders were able to take some of the burden from the boy. A man finally helped Isaiah set his dad on land while a woman called for the ambulance. Now, Josh Williams was transported to the Baptist Hospital set Saturday night and the trauma alert. And soon after, he was transported to Sacred Heart Hospital for a C1 through C3 fusion surgery that following Monday, so two days later. And this is amazing. From Audrey, the mother, she states, I'm so grateful that Asai was there for him because if he wasn't there, my husband probably wouldn't be here today. The fact that a nine-year-old boy thought so fast in thinking, oh, I got to help. I'm the only one here to help him. He brought him all the way back to shore, all by himself. He's daddy's hero, that's for sure. I tell you what, sometimes we think there is no other way to help. Sometimes we think we're ill-equipped. Sometimes we could be like Simon Fitzmaurice, who think we've got so many negative things against us that we can't seemingly overcome. But Simon Fitzmaurice, remember, used that eye gaze machine to control everything, to direct a movie that became a hit movie. And here's this little boy, Asaya Williams, who's nine years old, 100 pounds less than his dad, Josh, and somehow able to do the supernatural, the unthinkable, the extraordinary, to grab that man who was about to drown and probably going to die to the shore, later to have him saved with this incredible procedure to fuse that neck together. It's amazing what people can do when they put their minds to it, when they put their will to it. Maybe your back's been against the wall with disease conditions or something tragically has happened to you like Simon Fitzmaurice. Maybe you've been against the wall like a sigh with seemingly extraordinary things in front of you you thought you couldn't achieve. They were impossible, but somebody needs your help. Somebody needs your help to step up. And maybe you're that somebody just like a sigh. Maybe it's not a life-saving thing where you're pulling somebody out of the water, but maybe you're pulling somebody out of darkness. Maybe you're pulling them out of depression. Maybe you're pulling them out of a blue moment. Because as we know, these negative things like Simon and like was faced by a sigh could have destroyed our life. We're inundated many times with negative um, very, uh, very fearful based, anxiety based news. Maybe a little good news like this will help us cheer up a little bit. See, good news is good medicine. I'll say that one more time. Good news is good medicine. So I hope the story of Simon and the story of Isaiah inspired you a little bit to keep on going. Because remember, no matter what obstacle you come up against, if you have enough strength in your heart, enough faith and resolve within you, you can overcome. If you think you're not strong enough, reach a little bit deeper because you always got a little more in there. Think about a side the next time you don't think you're strong enough. I hope you've enjoyed this edition 
of Healthcare's Missing Link. A little bit of good news for you today. Remember, don't let those hidden things in health like bad news and anxiety-filled stories that are filling our minds and, and media every day steal your health. One thing I always ask you to do for these episodes is subscribe and find out what's happening next. So make sure you do that in the feed. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode of Healthcare is Missing Link. See you later. Bye-bye.